His name? Charles Rutherford. Now, the, one of the reasons why we know he is still haunting the building that he loved to work in is because of a Halloween tour that's done there. And you might be thinking, oh, Halloween tour, ghost tour inside that? It's not for you. Sadly, we are not, just like with a lot of government things, we are not invited to the party. That basically it's only for family and friends of the workers and, of course, the politicians. And they do this uh, unofficial ghost walk of the building only at Halloween time. And so the tour takes you around the building and we hear from a, a personal account of somebody who was there that when they walked near the legislative hall, so this is basically the room that if you watch uh, Ontario Parliament that they're all seated around and they got the guy in the, in the, in the king's throne and then they all yell at each other about what they're supposed to believe. It's like, I believe this because my people do. And no, you're wrong because I believe this because my people. They don't actually believe it. Sorry. I always said I'm not going to get political. <laughs> I don't want to go that, down that road. But that's the room. That's the room. So they're walking by the room. And um, as they're like standing near it, it is said that um, somebody in the group yelled out, is there somebody in the chamber? Like actually cut off the guide to yell that out because they saw something move. And then they said they heard a voice say the name Charles. Now this connects perfectly because Charles Rutherford, not just the fact that he was seen in that room before by others, but also the fact that he's been seen in other parts of Queens Park by others as well. And now why is this fellow so respected? That's what I'd like to end off. Just to, like this is the most powerful, not the ghost story in this. The most powerful part is the reason why Charles Rutherford was such a respected war hero. Now he comes from the time of World War One. He fought at Somme, which was a large battle. I believe it was in France. Yes, France. And he also fought in another battle at uh, uh, Vimy Ridge. He's respected for both of those. But one of the main reasons why he got a huge medal for bravery is from a story that surfaced. I, I don't think he's the one who told it. It was just told like the, the soldiers saw him as this legendary figure because of this story. So basically, he was doing some rounds and he somehow stumbled into a German camp. So German soldiers, 45 of them stand up. And they pointed their guns at him. So just imagine being in his in his shoes. Like, how would you react if you're in the dead of war, your enemy's just over there, you're walking, you get lost, and you stumble, and now you're surrounded by 45 nervous soldiers pointing their guns at you? How, how the heck would you feel? But him, I mean, I don't know. I guess he's used to this because he was calm. He was calm. He was quick thinking. He summed up all this courage, and he also knew some German. This is what saved his life. And he yelled out in German, You are my prisoners. Drop your guns. My men have you surrounded. And he did it with such calm and such force. Guess what? Those tough, manly Germans believed every word of it. Seriously. They were like, uh, Oh, oh no. Uh, sorry, I don't speak German. They're like, oh, no. And they, they slowly put down their guns. And uh, Charles moved towards them. And I guess to kind of like move like a, like a sheepdog might be, they do some sheep to push the group away from the pile of guns so that they, if they figured out nobody was around, they couldn't jump for it. And uh, he had just his gun. So he pulls out his gun and he just walks the entire group of 45 Germans back to the Canadian camp. And just because of that quick thinking, he captured them all. One Canadian soldier versus 45 Germans, I definitely would vote for the Canadian, <laughs> especially if it's this guy. This guy here who has balls of steel. Sorry, sorry, lack of a different term. 